uh, universitas-universitas yang tergabung dalam program Kederika, kami juga mengundang beberapa universitas lain yang sudah punya AI Center of Excellence. Karena program uh, presentasi webinar yang diberikan akan sangat-sangat bagus untuk uh, pengetahuan dan untuk pengembangan uh, talent, talenta AI uh, untuk apa, uh, kepentingan uh, di dunia edukasi. Nah, jadi ada tiga topik tadi yang sudah disampaikan oleh Ibu Melissa. Uh, komitmen kami, setelah itu kami akan bicara berikutnya. Uh, topik pertama adalah uh, hari ini, ya, di webinar seri pertama, itu Conversational AI with Antigia Jarvis and Nemo SDK. Jadi nanti Dr. Ikan akan sharing tentang uh, apa, uh, uh, Software Development Kit, Nvidia Jarvis dan Nemo. Ya. Ya, kemudian ada, uh, saya harap Bapak-Ibu sekalian bisa hadir juga untuk di webinar seri kedua, karena topiknya juga sangat penting dan baik, yaitu uh, uh, topiknya Nvidia Metropolis SDK and Toolkits for Intelligent Video Analytics yang akan diberikan pada hari Kamis, Januari, 13 Januari jam 10 pagi juga. Lalu uh, akan disusul uh, lagi dengan webinar seri ketiga itu Nvidia dan N Data Analytics Platform yaitu uh, akan diberikan pada hari Kamis Februari uh, uh, 3 atau 3 Februari jam 10 juga. Jadi kami ada uh, tiga seri webinar yang sangat baik untuk pengembangan uh, AI talent dan AI knowledge. Berharap Bapak Ibu sekalian bisa mengikutinya dan uh, kita uh, bersyukur atas apa, uh, support dari Dr. Etikan yaitu Chief Technology and Director uh, dari NVIDIA Asia Pacific South Region yang akan memberikan uh, tiga webinar ini. Oke, okay. so without further ado, I will pass back to Melissa uh, and then Melissa yeah, uh, Melissa will pass to Dr. Etikan. Oke, okay, thank you. Selamat pagi Bapak Ibu sekalian, terima kasih. Baiklah, terima kasih kepada Bapak Rene Wijaya. Dan selanjutnya pemaparan materi akan diberikan oleh Dr. Etikan Kanda Samikarupia. Izinkan saya sebelumnya membaca profil dari beliau. Dr. Etikan Kanda Samikarupia, as Chief Technologies Director at NVIDIA Asia Pacific South Region Works with innovators, researchers, and techno entrepreneurs to accelerate AI and GPU adaptation for their translational research and development and software solutioning needs. Currently, he guides researchers, developers, and customer and partner R&D centers and disruptive startups to implement actionable solutions for real-world problems, meeting specific requirements, leveraging NVIDIA GPU, DPU software, hardware capabilities. He has published numerous publications, patents, and developed software libraries in past. Dr. Etikan, The screen is yours. Thank you, Rene and Melissa. Uh, and I'll be sharing my slides. Just uh, let me bring out my slides. Uh, does it come through? Yes. Lisa, can you see the slides? Does it come through? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, sure. Um, a very good morning to everybody. I'll be covering today conversational AI, and I have about, uh, I think, another uh, one hour and four minutes left. Right. So what we believe in, uh, in NVIDIA is eventually every device will have some kind of intelligence, some kind of a smart capability, whether... It is a small, big, wired, wireless, mobile, immobile, uh, fixed, and so forth. All of them will have some some level of capabilities, right? Um, including the ability to, to listen and to understand. I mean, if those who are using Siri, for example, or you're using Alexa, you can do a conversational AI. They are embedded very small. You can talk to example, right? And these devices are always on, uh, able to uh, uh, understand and able to, uh, you know, accept uh, some kind of... Um, a sensor input, right? When I say sensor, voice is a sensing uh, capability. Touch is another sensing. Vision is another sensing and so forth. So mm -hmm. with this in mind, we kind of built many platforms or many SDKs as a jumpstart for researchers and developers like yourself to get started working on uh, building a solution 
no. right? From your R&D capability where you're doing uh, development and research, how do you move into a solution that you can deploy? And of course, we have compute for all this from all the way to small, all the way to big. And congratulations, you have a DGX at your place. I'll tell you how you can actually use this DGXs for your own conversational AI R&D next. Now, having said so, as a global AI company, uh, we have varieties of application. Uh, so conversational AI, which I'll be sharing today, which is uh, Nemo. And the other one is we have just changed the name from Jarvis to uh, Riva. I'll share with you later. So Nemo and, and, and uh, Riva is a two SDK. But beside these two, there are 150 SDKs that you can actually run on your DGX that you have. And this actually cut across different, different vertical. It could be building a, a robotic system. It could be building uh, machine learning capabilities. It could be used for even uh, 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 quantum uh, 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 dynamics, we call it, right? Uh, um, uh, quantum related research. It could be for life sciences, for healthcare, genomics, and so forth. So I just want to make sure that you understand that what we are sharing today is only two SDK out of the 150 SDKs that we have. Generally, we have uh, you know close to uh, uh, now 2.5 million developers uh, worth uh, uh, close to about. Uh, we are growing up in terms of close to about 10,000 startups, and uh, we want to have more. Uh, developers like yourself, eventually as you graduate or even before you graduate, start a company from a student, you can become an entrepreneur, right? There are so many unicorns, so you can start with a mini con first, right? Um, using all these SDKs and, and a platform. Now, what I'm going to cover today, out of the 150 SDKs, only two SDK, which is, um, if you can see, let me... Uh, bring the pointer so that it's very clear. We, I'm going to cover only Nemo and Riva. So for those who are interested to work on many other platforms and SDKs, feel free, go to developer.nvidia.com and then you can actually look at all the SDKs available. Later, I'll share with you a place what you call NGC, where you can download all the software. Uh, almost all of them are free for you to use. Right? I'll, I'll share. Now, next is uh, based on uh, today's session. Let me share with you how a conversational AI will look like. Of course, you have many examples. You, you can create different scenarios, different application and so forth. I'm just giving one example here. Um, right, I just make sure that audio comes through. Um, let me... Uh, Okay, there is an audio to this. Let's see whether my audio is working or else I, have, uh, I will share again, right? Can you all hear? No. Oh. No, no okay. so the part okay. can you have to I have the, to share. Uh, like yesterday, uh, share yes. the song. Okay. I, I thought share. I I thought I enabled this. Let me just... Uh, right. Um. Okay, I have uh, turned it on. I'll just uh, turn on and off again. Okay, let's. Can you hear now? You want to get some food? Okay. Yes. 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 All right. Find us a Mexican restaurant. The nearest Mexican restaurant is Luna Mexican Kitchen, located at 1495 the Alameda San Jose. How's the weather in San Francisco? It is currently 66 degrees and sunny in San Francisco. Actually, you know what? I'm kind of feeling sushi. Really? Yeah. All right. Show us a Japanese one. The nearest Japanese restaurant is Aniki Sushi, located at 3810 Mori Avenue, Freeman. How about tomorrow? It will be mostly cloudy with a high of 62 and low of 54. What's the rating? Aniki Sushi has four stars on Yelp. That's pretty good. All right, show us the directions. 
Here are the directions to Aniki Sushi. Nice, I'm excited. I've really been craving sushi. Yeah, yeah, it's about time we eat. So that's just an example of how uh, a conversational AI can be developed, right? And if you see throughout the context of the discussion, okay, do you want to get some food? Right? He says yeah, you want to get some food, food, right? All right. Okay. So there's a if you see there is a two person, right? And the AI is another one more uh, entity here, right? It actually can see person A and person B. So it's seeing, right? It's the ability to see. This is a person A. This is a person B. And then it can actually can detect this is a person A voice, this is person B voice, right? And then he says, the nearest Mexican restaurant find a Mexican restaurant. So when you say Mexican restaurant, it actually can able to go and search the nearest Mexican restaurant. That means you embed into another one more search engine. And the search engines bring the information back. Mexican kitchen located at 1495. So next is 66 degrees and sunny in San Francisco. So when you say what is the weather like, it, AI knows currently he's any, actually in San Francisco, not in Jakarta or not in Singapore, right? And then you can find the information saying that what exactly the weather. So localization, uh, local context or local awareness comes in, right? So this is where the the contextual awareness is important part of the conversational actually, AI. You know what? I'm kind of feeling sushi. Really? Yeah. All right. Show us a Japanese one. Then he says, show us a Japanese one. So what does Japanese one means, right? So if you just take a keyword and try to search, you will never understand the context is actually asking for a Japanese restaurant. So you have this, so Japanese one means, I know the context, we are talking about restaurant. We are not talking about, uh, you know, uh, some other place. So it knows, go and look for Japanese restaurant. So this is just an example how the intelligence at the back comes in, which I'll go into the next uh, share with you as a platform. All right. So as you observe just now, uh, the the search engine actually takes the audio. So when you do audio, there is a some of the work need to be done from speech to text or by using ASR component, right? You extract the features, there is acoustic model because you see there is a surrounding noise must be removed so that you can capture the words correctly. And once you capture the, co uh, the, the words, uh, you know, it could be any language, right? Later I'll share with you how Nemo and Riva SDK can support any languages, including Bahasa, uh, Bahasa Indonesia, right? So, then you you need to have a, a language model generator, uh, you know, so that if there is a missing words, you can actually fill the the right letter so that you have a complete uh, word can be constructed. Then you may want to even display the the speech to text that you have done. Like just now, you can see the uh, the text appearing, right? You can appear the text. So once that is done, at the back it goes for natural language understanding. So you may want to search. There is a different type of uh, machine uh, uh, translation component and capability comes in. The context awareness, the re entity relationship, uh, all that has to come in so that you have a right association to the uh, text that you obtain takes place at the back end, which is NLU. Once that is completed, you have a uh, a, a word or string or text or paragraph, whatever it is, right? So this then has to be translated back to speech. This is what we call text to speech conversion. So this whole thing is the entire pipeline so that you can have a complete conversational AI. And the most important, the whole, the cycle from here, doing all these things going back must be then within 300 milliseconds so that you feel as though you're talking to a human being. Now, how do we? Uh, how does the Riva and 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 Nemo SDK works? Is you you take any uh, you know uh, um, what I call as the uh, a framework, right? You might be using uh, TensorFlow or using a PyTorch, Keras, Kaldi, whatever frameworks that you are familiar with, and then a pre-trained model. I'll ta share with you some of the pre-trained model available. You take the uh, uh, NGC uh, container. Uh, and all these uh, frameworks, the application, pre-trained model, all available in NGC, accessible through your DGX. You take that, you train the model. After you train the model, then you test it and validate it. 
um, you know, you're happy with the, the quality of, of deployment or in terms of inference, then you can actually deploy at scale. So that's how the end-to-end -end software uh, flow will look like, um, which I'm going to share with you uh, next. And, uh, you know, it, the total solution that's available from NVIDIA so that you can actually even deploy at scale uh, easily. Now let's look at the first SDK, which is Nemo. Uh, you know, so Nemo is already being in production in many companies today, right? Uh, uh, for telecom, for example, uh, you know, there's many companies already adopted. And, and down here is just an example of companies which are already deploying in, and there is actually many, uh, I just have picked a few. Um, in many verticals uh, available. This is the thing I shared with you. So now what is the Nemo SDK that you can get, download and use it, right? So it's a, it's a toolkit for you to build a state of art. Uh, Sota means a, a state of art, conversational models, right? So these are all a deep, a deep learning base, both speech language models. Uh, today, what we support is uh, eight uh, um, languages for ASR. So that means, what does it mean? Eight languages means out of the box, English will work, no problem. Spanish will work, no problem. Russian will work, no problem. But for Bahasa Indonesia, we don't have data sets. You know, we don't have expertise to build. So you need to build on your own by collecting your own data set. Uh, either in terms of the uh, voice that you need to collect so that you can actually test. But uh, if you were to use the pre-trained model that we actually developed across many languages, you will get automatically close to 70 to 80% of accuracy, right? Uh, so what you need to do is just need to train this with more data set that you collect for better accuracy. Uh, as for the NLU, five languages being support, again, it is totally open source. You can take it and utilize it. You can build your own source code, you can modify it, and you can even after that use it for your own uh, you know, research work, for publication, or even if you have a commercialization uh, idea, you can even commercialize it. Uh, there is no licensing fee, uh, totally everything is free. Uh, and also we have, you know, at the back end, uh, the, the Nemo core is actually integrated together with the PyTorch and PyTorch Lightning uh, uh, so that it is easy for you to use the entire uh, pipeline. Um, yeah, so uh, the next is, let me share with you, these are the uh, uh, pre-trained model, right? Some of the models might be familiar to you and you're using it. And these are the example of tasks that each and every model usually specializes for. And the important is take a look at the word error rate. Uh, sometimes we look at uh, uh, not only WER, word error rate, sometimes we look at character error rate, but for Bahasa, I think it's a word error rate because each, uh, uh, each word is independent uh, component, unlike uh, uh, probably in other languages like uh, like Thai or like in Mandarin, a character plays a very important. Now, this is what you can do today out of the box, uh, speech to text, speech classification, speech recognition, name entity recognition, question and answering, translation, uh, and then uh, looking at uh, TTS, for example, vocoder is available. Uh, so these are the type of model we support, Tacatron, Waveglow, Hi-Fi Gun, and so forth, right? So try to take that again, uh, you can use it today. And this is the language that I mentioned that we support. We can see, you know, uh, this is just a common language which is spoken by large population in the world, you know, uh, billions of people. Um, so for Bahasa Indonesia, you need to work on it. Uh, and, but 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 uh, I have I worked on a couple of projects uh, in 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 this region for different languages by using a pre-trained model which we give it away uh, for uh, these models that you mentioned over here. As I said, 70 to 80 percent accuracy can be achieved. So by augmenting with your own lo uh, local data set, you can reduce the word error rate to a to a single digit. All right. So train your ASR NLP. Uh, NMT or TTS model by yourself. Uh, you know, we provide uh, all the code blocks. We call it is a neural module that you can actually use it. All right. Um, now, what is neural module is it's actually uh, code blocks. I, I call as uh, 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 plugins, software plugins that you have, which is easily is again it's an open source. You can take it. I can uh, you know you can uh, and take it and modify it. Uh, make your own workflow. So we have given an example of reference workflow so that you can actually take it and build your own uh, uh, workflow. Um, 
now I won't go into detail of the uh, the GPU component part of it. You know, you're, if you're using a DJX or even any GPUs that you're using today in your workstation and so forth, they're able to support and run. Uh, but the best part is by using an, an a DJX, you can run on a multiple GPU. Each DJX has eight GPUs so that you can train much faster using the multiple GPU so that you can scale your training capacity. Now, um, so beside the, um, the standard uh, uh, model, we also have the Megatron, but Megatron is, is it's, a, it's a very complex model with about 500 and uh, the latest model that we have built in NVIDIA is about 580 billion parameters. Um, so again, this model, it's, it's uh, available for you to run. Uh, but it actually needs large compute. Uh, a single DGX is not enough, um, but again, it's available uh, uh, in, uh, in NGC as well, right? Uh, you, can, uh, you can actually sign up for early access if you want to go and try it. Um, so we have also included the Nemo with the different other uh, uh, frameworks uh, so that it's easy for you to integrate and then run. Uh, for your so including a uh, Hydra framework is available um, as, as once you have trained the model next I'm going to go through what is Riva is again another open source SDK for deployment purposes uh, how you can you actually develop an application that's what it, it means right now uh, don't worry I'll share all the slides with you after this session uh, you actually, there will be a, a link to go, uh, how to create a text processing, how to create a, you know, create your own data set, and then how can you explore all this is available uh, link, right? And uh, I'll skip the rest of the slides, which basically just to share uh, who are the customers who are using it today. There's many companies are using it for different, uh, uh, you know, uh, use cases and scenarios. So if you can see over here, uh, even some cases where we have our developers, like for example, InstaDeep, as uh, you know, as as trained the model for uh, Arabic language, right? So it, it's not um, it's not only character base so the language could be you know arabic for example i'm working for solution using thai language the thai it is the character is totally different than english right uh, russian is different than uh, english characters but it still can learn right so that's the beauty of the of the framework and platform uh you know based on the pre-trained model you can train different languages great so next is what i'm going to do is i'm going to share on uh, riva so after you train using nemo next you use riva to uh, to develop your own application ready for deployment okay great um, yeah, let me share. Okay, so Riva is, is more for uh, deployment, right? How are we going to deploy once you train the model? Uh, the flow is still the same. Um, you know, you, you get the uh, TTS, uh, TTS part done, then the NLU comes in, and then the text-to-speech comes in. The only key difference is, uh, one is training the model, next is when you deploy, you may need to have a dialogue manager and can process the speech comes in, then you get it done, goes back, so that you understand the state of conversation between the AI entity and then the other person, right? Um, so there is uh, multiple dialogue managers has been uh, made available. And uh, uh, some of the challenges that, you know, addressed by uh, uh, speech type of application is being addressed, right? Including customization, um, and also some of the data, you know, you, you may not uh, able to disclose to everybody uh, and so forth. So these are the general challenges that we have seen. But let me go back to the SDK itself. What is the features of SDK that actually can help you to develop? Um, now, what we have done is uh, we have trained our model uh, using public uh, uh, speech data set, which is available, right? Uh, like example, Spanish language or Russian language or, or Mandarin language and so forth. Um, and, uh, you know, over uh, almost 100,000 hours across multiple languages. So that, that's why out of the box, pre-trained model quality is quite high. You just need to retrain. 
Um, so either, you know, of course, you can use Nemo to train those who actually want to go to the lower level, control the source code, uh, control the code blocks, you make your own pipeline, you want to, you know, modify the vocoder element and so forth. Nemo is the way to go. But if you want a zero co uh, coding, easy to use tool, there's another tool called Tau Toolkit. Is another different toolkit I won't cover today, but I'll share with you where you can go and download this toolkit. And this toolkit helps you to automate the whole training process for uh, continuous collection of data set. Now, again, it's easy for you to use. Uh, you know, I'll share with you where you can pull later and you can actually scale number of deployment easily because it's a production quality SDK that you can even deploy after you start on the project. Uh, now, this is just an example of, uh, you know, some of the models which is uh, we have implemented. And then uh, you can see that the word error rate uh, in the last couple of years, we have improved the word error rate of the model. Uh, for example, you know, Jasper, QuartzNet, the latest is Citrinet 1024, there is a 512, and also there is 56, I guess, uh, sorry, 128, 128, 512, 1024 Citrinet model available which again free it's in the ngc take it, download you can train your model for bars uh, next is if you look at it uh, i think you go to mute um somebody's there okay um next is in terms of uh this is a speech recognition which is uh, stt for tts text to speech is we have model like tuckatron wave glow fast speech hi-fi gun and so forth all this uh, model actually runs on our gpu very well you can then you try use it for the basa or any languages as i said it could be any languages um you know there are people actually using it even for a uh, um, indigenous people languages uh you know like like in australia maui a language which is only spoken by the indigenous people in Maui. They actually, uh, there is a Ma Maui research interest group. They're using our pre-trained model to train their own models. And I think the last three, two years ago, when I was in Indonesia, the Minister of Education told me there is a 700 plus languages, uh, not only Bahasa Indonesia, but there is many dialects, many languages in Indonesia. So you can try to use that to, to develop model for each and every one of them there, right? Um, so again, uh, there is uh, uh, different components within ASR. You can use the different models and then you concatenate or ensemble the model for the pipeline that you want to do, either in terms of acoustic modeling or post-processing or spectrogram generator or vocoders. Uh, this is what we have, uh, you know, is available out there, you take it and use it. All right. Uh, so the, the, the other toolkit, which I won't cover due to interest of time, is this what we call as uh, um, the uh, training toolkit, right, which is you don't need to uh, uh, do hands on development, but it actually comes together as part of the, you know, entire flow. Um, so if we use a Tau toolkit, you just need to take a pull the pre-trained model from NGC. I'll share with you what is NGC after this. Data set is your local data set that you've collected. I suggest you can, uh, you know, you, uh, um, if, if possible, when you collect your data set, use a good quality data set um, uh, uh, in terms of using a mic. If you can use a mic, very good. If it is no, it's okay. Even, uh, mobile phone uh, is enough to collect. That means they're using a mic in the mobile phone is enough to collect data set uh, for you to train, training purposes, all right? And you can actually have different kind of conditions in terms of background environment, in terms of different uh, area and so forth, so that you have a good different type of combinations of data set being collected. So you, once you collect the data set, uh, you may want to do some kind of uh, augmentation to the data set so that you have a good variety of data set to train. And after it has been augmented, you can train by using uh, Tau. And once you are happy with the quality of the model, uh, you can export it. Uh, and then after you export, um, you can you know deploy to Riva for, um, uh, for a deployment of use cases and scenario. Right. So this is just an, a quick comparison between 
uh, different services. So this, uh, uh, this is a Riva speech recognition uh, uh, quality that we created. These are by third party. This is a multinational third party uh, application being provided by others, right? So if we can see across all, the the uh, word error rate is the lowest. Uh, you know, lower is better, right? Uh, so in this case, uh, uh, our word uh, error rate from the pre-trained model is actually much better. Either you, in the space of a video uh, conferencing type of environment, or even in podcasts, uh, you know, those you are creating your own podcast, for example, in 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 in, uh, in Indonesia, and you have different different uh, you know. Uh, probably languages you're going to support. For environment or podcast, we are still better in terms of the word error rate. Uh, call center, for example, is very famous. Everybody wants to, um, you know, have AI for call center. Um, so ours is uh, quite, uh, you know, good in terms of word error rate uh, comes out. But of course, this word, word error rate can be improved by collecting more data set. We only collected about uh, 100,000 hours for all languages. But if you collect more data set, it'll become much more accurate. Um, again, this is a world-class automatic uh, ASR component that we provide. Uh, you know, it actually, uh, uh, you can support different type of sampling rate, eight uh, uh, kilohertz, 16 kilohertz, 32, 44, 48 kilohertz of this type of speech that goes in. And, uh, a different type of uh, normalization is supported and we support both the streaming mode and also batch mode if you're doing some kind of application. Streaming mode means uh, you can you can design your own application uh, where people actually talk to the application and do a conversation or batch mode is uh, you may be providing a service where uh, uh, in the past three months or one month or, or so forth, there is a lot of uh, video as audio has been collected you want to do transcription, right? Take all the audio you want to transcribe and then create a text for it. Then after that, you want to do mining on the text. So batch mode also supported using Riva, all right? Uh, controllable text to speech. Uh, what I, what we're saying is uh, we given all the options to you so that you can um, you can actually uh, uh, modify either the, in the in the space of uh, the normalization or the spectrogram generation or vocoder uh, type of uh, manipulation can be done and you can you can actually modify all this in uh, in uh, in a river, right? Uh, again. Uh, what what need what needs to be done is we have pre-trained model for global languages, common languages, but you know you still need to train for as uh, you know accent, right? The accent may be different. Uh, the domain specific, you know, you want to train this for a, a bank, maybe different than uh, for hospital utilization or for a conversation in a different domain specific. The vocabulary has to be improved for your own use case and scenario context as be given to it. So all these are actually supported, but you know, you have to add in your own data set to train, right? Okay, so then there is many people are using it today. Uh, for example, there's just a few example that we have, uh, but uh, uh, you know, all this is made available as an SDK or framework uh, to you, open source, for that you can carry on your research work, optimization, application development, and all this runs on, uh, on uh, DGX that you have. I'll share these slides where we have all the details of all the models we call a model cut. Uh, you can go through uh, by using this. If you go to the link, there is a link. Uh, so I'll set, share the slides to uh, to Melissa and Rene. They can actually share to you, right? Um, so next, I'm going to go into where can you get all this information in NGC. Okay, let me share with you what you see and how to use NGC. Great. Um, so NGC is nothing but it's a it's like a, it's like your app store, right? Uh, like a, you know Apple App Store, right? So this is a GPU App Store, where we have 
all the uh, GPU accelerated uh, frameworks, toolkits, model, model scripts, and uh, many collection of uh, even uh, some of the applications made available. Uh, just an example, it, it actually covers many, many verticals. I, for example, it could be computer vision or conversational AI, which I'm sharing with you, recommendation engine and so forth, All right? So uh, it allows you to do the whole journey of pull the framework, uh, take the data set that you have locally that you have collected, you train using a specific framework, for example, Tau, and then uh, the deployment part comes in, right? So I won't cover the other two, TensorRT and Triton, but it's all this available in NGC. Now, industry SDKs further, you know, simplifies the AI workflow, right? Um, so as I said, this is a, there's a lot of uh, uh, application there available, right? I'm just sharing Riva and Nemo today. Right. Uh, you, the others you can try. So I'll go through and share a real time. Uh, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll go to the website and show you how you can actually navigate through. There is a catalog. You go through the, the catalog and try to understand. Now, this security is, scanning on NGC checks for common vulnerabilities and exploits, forgotten crypto keys. Let's select our highest scoring. Sorry. But let's head to the container section on NGC to take a look at some of those reports. To view reports for a specific container, you need to open its listing. So let's select one of these cards from- Sorry, I just there. want to check. Can you guys hear the the speech coming through? Yes, yes of course. Okay. Yes, sure. okay then. Yeah. Okay, let me start from the beginning. Scanning on NGC, checks for common vulnerabilities and exploits, forgotten crypto keys, malware, ports that have been left open, and all kinds of different things so that you have the peace of mind when you're using our container that it's ready for production and secure. So first things first, let's head to the container section on NGC to take a look at some of those reports. To view reports for a specific container, you need to open its listing. So let's select one of these cards from the NGC catalog page. I'm going to choose PyTorch, for example. Now, depending on the level of detail you want, we provide security scan reports in the NGC UI in a couple of different ways. Okay. The first, if you're just looking for a snapshot to give you peace of mind, in the left-hand side menu, we provide a rating. That's based on NVIDIA's security policy, and it shows you from AAA down to C how secure that tag is for the latest tag for a given container. So in this case, we can see that both the ARM and the AMD instance of this PyTorch container are both AAA rated. That's our highest scoring. But of course, if you want to go into more detail and you want to see exactly how that rating was generated, you can select the security scanning tab from the top of this view here. So let's dive in and see more about this report. From the report details page, we get a lot more information about that security report itself. Of course, I can see the rating again, but I also get a breakdown of how many critical, high and medium severity CVEs were found as part of that image. I can even search those vulnerabilities should there be a specific thing that I'm looking for. If I want to see more information about a given CVE, I can take a look at this table view here. I can also click this hyperlink on any one of these CVEs and it'll take me right to the NIST database listing for that vulnerability. So I can find out what causes it, what the steps to fix are, and what the security community are doing about resolving that problem. It's also worth noting that NGC security scan checks both operating systems, so OS and non OS packages to find vulnerabilities. So it's a really comprehensive scan of the entire container image. Now, it's not just the latest tag that we provide security scan reports. I can filter for any previous tag that we've had here and it'll show me security scan data for that tag too. So let's drop down here and check out one of the older PyTorch container images. So we can see that this PyTorch tag that's a few months old actually now has one critical and a few high vulnerabilities. We can also see this warning in the NGC UI that's telling us to mitigate our risk, we should upgrade to the latest container tag to make sure that our content is safe. If you'd like from here, you can view a remedy doc which talks about simple ways that you can resolve those critical and high vulnerabilities yourselves. And it'll take you to a docs page with a whole bunch of more information. 
Or if you want to find out more about the security rating and how we do scans, you can click our policy bundle link here and it'll take you directly to the NGC security policy that we use to scan all of our images. It'll give you a breakdown of how we generate those ratings, the A, triple. Sure. So I'm going to stop here just for the interest of time. That's one. Second is let me show you in uh, in real time, right? Uh, how can you go to NGC and then uh, uh, access to this? Um, <clears throat> So just go to ngc.nvda.com. Uh, for first time, you just need to register. Registration is free. Uh, you know, it just takes a couple of minutes for you to uh, to join in. Uh, then, um, you know, based on your uh, the credential, you can go in, go to the catalog page. That's what I, I just now uh, being shared just now. Um, just give me one second to move this here and then you can explore the catalog you know there are all containerized that you can look at a container so this is the nemo container which is now our sharing and again it uses uh, um, uh, you know uh, uh, interface which is easy for you to use so that there is uh, details about the container itself this is the nemo uh, uh, you know, you can go into um, uh, into the the clicks here. It gives you go, brings you to the documentation page. Uh, there is uh, you know a lot of other details are there available. Uh, let's say they go to the catalog and then uh, uh, catalogs. I want to search. Uh, um, let's say um, Citrinet. So this is Citrine now. I think I should go to the collection. Yeah, I go to the collection. Um, yeah, so let's say I want to go to Citrine from, um, so this is when I search for Citrine, for example, there's many uh, uh, Citrine, a different kind of, uh, 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 combinations of citrinets will come here, right? This is a speech to text, for example, uh, with the 1024. There is a 512 that I, that I shared with you just now. Uh, and, you know, there is a, for different, this is a Denmark language and then so forth, right? This is for English. So you can take the pre trainer model from here. So, or you are looking for a, a Jasper, for example, right? Uh, another a model that we have pre-trained available. You can take the uh, Jasper model. We also have an example of a speech to text notebook, Jupyter notebook. So if you are teaching for your students, you want to use the Jupyter notebook to teach, you can use that as well. Uh, this is the the, the Tao uh, framework that I mentioned, which is integrated together, is available as well. All right. So it's a place for you to go and get all the uh, frameworks and library uh, that you can actually uh, download. And, uh, and and use. As I said, again, it's free. Uh, feel free to use it. Uh, so you try to use the, the even the PyTorch TensorFlow from NGC because this is optimized for to run on a multi GPU. So when you go into just now when I you know in the demo was done right. So this is capable to run on Linux on AMD 64 as well. It can run, uh, and in this case you know for example it supports multiple GPU. Uh, it supports multiple architecture uh, versus the open source uh, that you may have right. So try all this and uh, you will actually uh, benefit from here. Now, let me go get back, continue again with the uh, NGC where I stopped. Um, yeah. Um, Now secure. Yeah, so uh, pretend model again is easy and fast to use. Uh, help you to uh, to scale up your uh, your training cycle, right? Um, 
Now, then the other is, uh, so you, you, you need to have your own uh, research work done, try to differentiate what is Jasper, what is, uh, for example, Citrinet, uh, and so forth, and see which one is better for, for local language you're actually working on. You know, as I, as, I, as I have been informed, there is 700 different languages in Bahasa Indonesia, uh, or for in, in, in Indonesia. So you may want to customize locally and, and see which was the right model to, to start, right? So there is more features being added on and uh, we'll be including, uh, you know, more, many more components and capability, right? Introducing um, MDC catalog model resumes. So I won't go into details. This, this, this catalog, so you can go and just click on it. Just as now I share with you, right? Then, uh, you go in detail, it'll give you the total information mm -hmm. about the model, how the model has been designed, uh, how the architecture was done, where the data set was actually extracted from, so that you have a complete detail, right? So let me uh, uh, share with you means, right? So for example, uh, uh, model catalog, um, model catalog, right? Uh, <clears throat> Let's go to Jasper. So, um, so when you go to the model, sorry, can you guys see the screen that I'm sharing? Yes. Okay. Yes. So when you go to the model catalog, you let's say for example, this Jasper, right? Again, there's many models you can look at, then it'll, it'll share with you how the model architecture was designed. Um, again, um, you know, you can look at the specific model, how it's been. Uh, uh, so you can look at how the number of blocks are designed. And if you see Jasper is again, it's open source, it's a published uh, paper uh, by one of the author. So there'll be a reference for the uh, uh, the paper as well, wherever we took, I think should be uh, somewhere at the bottom, they should be given. And then how this model was actually designed and developed. Uh, how we actually use different uh, capability in terms of optimizing the model and so forth. So this is what I call as a, a model catalog so that you understand uh, the way that it was designed and architect, right? Uh, yeah, let's say for example, some of the uh, component of this was taken from open, open sec to sec, right? So go to the model catalog, you get the details. Um, okay, let me uh, go back to the, um, to the share. <laughs> yeah, um, so once you have the um, model scripts, you can actually use Tau uh, toolkit. So you want to know further about Tau, just go to the website, search for Tau, or you go to the NGC, look for Tau. It's easy to use uh, a continuous pipeline, uh, uh, easily to be uh, to be used. But for those who are advanced users where you like source codes, you want to go and play with the code, use Nemo. So my suggestion is for conversational AI, Nemo and Riva. Nemo to train, Riva for you to do inferencing or deployment. But those who wants to automate the whole training cycle using a pre-trained model, use the Tau toolkit. Um, yeah, so um, Access. I'll skip some of the demos. Uh, um, yeah, so once you have trained and all that, right, it's, uh, we have actually example of references, uh, how even to deploy in a Kubernetes, in Helm chart. So those, this is a bit more advanced, but if you go to the next stage of deploying it and testing it, you know, probably you want to do this as, as part of your university research project, uh, you know, deploy in your own universities, in your call center of the university or students are trying to call and check certain information, right? You can test it and deploy even in university environment uh for um yeah okay great uh, don't worry i'll share the slides i just want to stop early at least uh we can have some question and answer the last uh 15 minutes okay melissa uh, open to you so that we can take some questions yes pa. Uh, actually there are already uh four questions on the chat box pa. okay I don't mean first from Lukman Nolhakim. Okay, sure. I'll just go to that. 
Uh, so the webinar is very interesting. I have two questions. How is NVIDIA Jarvis different from Siri, Hello Google, and Cortana? Okay, very good. So we don't call it Jarvis. We just change the name uh, to a Riva. So it's a, the one I shared is Riva. So for example, uh, Siri, uh, Hello Google, Cortana is a complete solution, right? Uh, which is uh, for you to consume. But there are many developers out there who's trying to develop their own version of Siri, their own version of Google and Cortana. So our intention here in NVIDIA is to develop the framework, develop the model and give it to you to the framework so that you can develop your own uh, local Siri or local Cortana. And then you can in incorporate that into your own uh, application framework that you may have, All right? So again, it's a framework and a library uh, and also pre-trained model for you to develop your own uh, Siri, Hello, and Cortana. And today, as you see, we have almost uh, you know twenty to thirty thousand developers globally developing their own application like this. And there is a demand is huge in in the market today. And uh, just for information, I'm working with uh, selectively, right? Uh, for example, uh, in, in Thailand with one company which is doing a Thai specific language. So even Google or uh, AWS uh, API services are not good for Thai language, right? Because it's a local language, only 100 million people speaks. So they have not a good quality. So they have to develop their own for that they can deploy at a production quality for their own application. Even similarly in Indonesia, I know companies like Kata.ai, uh, Prosa.ai, uh, there's a more, uh, you know, actually developing similar solution because all these big solutions are, uh, you know, does not meet their quality criteria. Uh, what use is this AI more specifically in, in the car office and company, all right? Yeah, this, this is conversational AI. You can use it in any type of environment. Uh, you know, this the, the one that I shared example is in in car assistant, right? So you talk to the car because when you're driving, you don't want to go and you know uh, touch certain things, lose attention from uh, from the driving. So you can actually have assistant in the car, which is an, an uh, intelligent uh, AI. Or in the case of uh, uh, in 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 our, our companies, right? It goes into a call center. So imagine with the current uh, pandemic, right? Uh, everybody goes into, uh, for example, e-commerce platform to order and buy. If there's an issue, they want to go to the call center. There are millions of calls going to come in. They cannot, you can't have, uh, you know, million uh, or, or 10,000, 20,000, 40,000 people in the call center to answer questions, right? And again, it has been proven 80% of the calls coming to a call center are normal questions, right? And... Um, so for this, you can have a conversational AI, which you can call and then deploy. So it's a, a typical scenario is in a telecom call center, a banking call center, and so forth, where the customer service is very important. Um, but also, you know, we have seen applications where uh, there are many interesting plug-in applications where if you are doing company meeting, right, uh, 10 people come together and then they actually talk to each other. So the auto subscription this is one of the example application uh, actually provided by Prosa.ai, which is an Indonesian-based startup company. They're using our, our libraries and our GPUs. They do auto transcription. So you just talk in your meeting, everything is record, uh, everything has been co converted into a Basa Indonesia text, right? So that the meeting minutes is taken. You don't need to go and type. It is taken, it's available. You just need to edit and store it for future reference, for example, right? Okay, next is if I look at it, um, this is uh, from Arung uh, Aga. Okay. Agamani. Agamani Budi, right? So it's from, um, um, so his question is, um, in the car, okay, for with the example shown in the car scene earlier, does it imply that it should tag its support or targets have planned to IoT application or probability a browser client application that fully uses, uh, you know, uses device computational power? No. So, uh, in order to do training, you need GPU, but in order to do inferencing, you can actually deploy it as an uh, application, but the execution of the model, it actually can run in a cloud, 
right? So the, the inference actually requires a GPU for you to run because the models are complex, the execution, it must take time. But what happens is, you know, even you can have, you know, you have your mobile phone. So actually your application is app in the mobile phone. Then I talk in the mobile phone. So when I talk, the speech actually converted into a sound connected to the mobile phone, go to the cloud, get the inferencing done and come back. And all this happens within 300 milliseconds. Right, so you can deploy. Uh, so the inferencing part, you don't need a GPU, right? Uh, there are even companies where what they're doing is they maybe in a context where you don't have internet connectivity, right? So they use our Jetson embedded nano platform, very small GPU compute, and they make a box. Um, and then they do inferencing in the box where there's no internet connectivity at all. Um, so that they can even deploy. That's another example of reference uh, uh, being done, All right? Um, so it can be in a browser, it could be a, a client service application, or it, it could be, you know, uh, embedded in terms of a device, all possible at the edge, at the cloud or hybrid, all possible. So next is from Lukman, right? Um, uh, that one is the same question, but oh, same question. Okay, next, yeah, so um, Ahmad Alfan. Okay, Ahmad uh, Alfan, right? Um, when I come, thank you. Uh, I'd like to know uh, more about Riva. I saw that we can deploy our model using Riva on cloud, on prem, embedded, etc. Is there any system requirement for the server or certain cloud service that NVIDIA provides for Riva? Uh, no. I mean, you can you can download Riva and the pre-trained model. You train on a NGC, uh, sorry, uh, train on a, on the DGX that you have. After that, when you want to deploy, you can go to any cloud service providers and you just uh, you know ask for a GPU lease, right? Uh, usually they have T4 uh, in the cloud, so use the T4 for you to do your deployment. Right. Uh, even you can run in any GPU anyway. It could be A100, it could be A30, A40, T4, any GPUs actually you can you can run this in a cloud. Uh, next is Arun. Uh, the question is, uh, recently new technology called Web GPU is being developed. Uh, currently is trial period and expected to be shipped on browsers in 2022. Um, I don't know about web GPU, so I can't comment on this, right? I need to uh, take a look at what is, how is it being architect? I mean, I, I read about it, but I'm not sure about the architecture of this, right? And how um, the web GPU can be attached to. I'm sorry, but um, let me take it and then I'll get back to you on the web GPU related. Um, Okay, next question is from Shinta, right? Hanafia. Uh, by the existence of AI nowadays, it it is uh, is it means that we can use AI to be immediate translator? I think it'll be so useful to translate the questions from Bahasa to English. Oh yeah, definitely. So you can do a translation. Uh, that's where the speech to text will help you. And there is actually a library, as I shared in the slide there, there is already a translator uh, pre-trained model. Um, it's just that not trained for Bahasa. We don't have a data set for Bahasa. So uh, probably what you can do is um, you can actually take it and use it and, uh, and train it. Now, the other uh, questions I have also, not really a question, a request. Uh, if let's say any of the universities here interested uh, to post your model, into NGC, you can do so, right? That means what I, what I mean is um, you can use our Nemo uh, uh, and also our pre-trained model. You collect your own Bahasa data set. After you train the, the model, uh, like then you contribute back to NGC. NGC is open, right? Uh, you can contribute back. So that will help many Bahasa developers to use uh, a Bahasa model. Bahasa Indonesia model or uh, anything that you want to develop and so forth, you can actually contribute and put it up. Uh, like, for example, uh, some of the universities in India, 
uh, because we don't support Hindi language or languages in India, right? So they are actually training their own model and they want to make it available to public so that they can take and use it. Um, so that is another effort I encourage, uh, you know, for the uh, for the universities or association in uh, in Indonesia to do. Okay, so I think uh, I think there's another one more question came in from uh, Muhammad Adil. Um, using Indonesia as an example, considering the fact that there are literally hundreds of regional languages, I agree with you, not to mention that amount of differing regional dialects as well, slangs as well, uh, beside the standard Bahasa. How can we train the speech AI in order to accommodate all those languages and so forth so that it's a human like? So it's very simple. Uh, again, use Nemo as your uh, training platform. You can use all the models that we have uh, made available, but you must collect your own local data set. All right. So that means uh, if you are doing dialects or if you are doing uh, smaller uh, uh, you know, tribal like of languages which need to be preserved or the language may be lost. You have to work with the community to collect the data set. As I said, a micro, uh, mobile phone base uh, uh, quality of data is enough. That means, right, you let people to speak and you just record it and you bring the data, uh, you know, you clean it, it's possible, then you can use it for your uh, deployment activities. Right. Uh, sorry, for your training activities, you can train uh, for the specific uh, uh, area. Yeah, I think uh, there's a question about recording content. Yes, the content will be recorded and made available to you later. So if you have a poor connection, no worries, you can have that. Yeah, so the next question is from uh, Vir Manto, right? Is it only to speech recognition or can we use also for text recognition or image recognition? So for text and image, actually the other toolkit, uh, which is uh, part of the Tao, uh, actually has a lot of images. So in, the text means OCR, right? So you can use OCR pre-trained model that we have to do text recognition. For image, there is also uh, image specific uh, models that you can actually uh, use for many object detection. I think we have about close to 20 different models uh, for image detection uh, using, uh, uh, for example, it could be ResNet, it could be, uh, you know, Citrina, uh, sorry, ResNet, um, CNN based, faster RCNN, uh, MobileNet, InceptionNet. Uh, there is a, many of those networks are there available. You can use for image as well. So for that, use Tao, T-A-O, Tao. I will send the slides across. I couldn't share because the time is limited. Uh, or maybe in the next future uh, session, uh, I'll have that shared. So you can have that there uh, for to understand Tao. Next is a uh, quick question. Okay, this is from uh, Sony, right? Is the targeted latency less than 300 milliseconds, not counting the network latency? Uh, so if I build the model, I only count the inference time. Uh, not really. What, what we are saying is 300 milliseconds is in order to have a conversation like you're talking to another person, right? Less than 300 is optimal. Uh, but I've seen in some cases, even, uh, you know, they are looking at the range of 400 to 500 uh, it is still uh, acceptable, right? Uh, yes, the answer is yes, including the network latency. Also, you won't have a good conversation because when you go and then you you want to talk, you, you got to make sure it's like talking to human being, all right? Uh, the, the AI has to talk back to you quickly. Uh, it cannot be very jerky or there's a delay. Uh, yeah, that's what we are we are looking at. So of course, in some areas, maybe your network quality is very poor. Then if we got to look at uh, different ways of getting that done, right? But standard network quality, you should be able to get this uh, implemented. Um, so another company in Thailand, actually, what they're doing now is they're doing a conversational AI, but then they're doing a, 
uh, search. So if you want to go, like for example, I'm giving, uh, you know, you are using uh, either Tokopedia or Bukalapa or Shopee or Lazada, whatever platform. So rather than you go and type in order to search for object, what they do is you press the, like a Siri button, you press and you say, uh, list me, uh, I don't know, uh, I want to buy uh, uh, toys. You just say toys. The toys is automatically translated from the voice to text display and all the toys comes out as part of the uh, uh, the listing, right? So when that comes in, you just need to go in and, 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 uh, and then you select, right? So there is many interesting ideas and creative solution being developed now. Um, this is from uh, uh, Fatan, right? Uh, uh, is there any possibility in Nemo to detect emotional state from, from a conversational AI? So at this point of time, we don't have a model for emotion detection, uh, but uh, it's, it's a work in progress. I think in the next three to six months, we will have some pre-trained model for emotion detection um, to be made available, but it's still work in progress. Um, so this is where I call uh, model specialization comes in, right? So rather than just doing uh, in a speech to text, you can even do an emotion analysis um, that you can actually work on your own. You can actually integrate that. So Nemo allows you to integrate that as a part of pipeline. After you, you do the text analysis at the back, you can say, uh, after the text, you can say, are you really hungry, right? Or you looks like you're very happy. So by understanding the tone, or you look very concerned, right? So you can put in the model as a pipeline of Nemo and put it into Riva for application, right? Um, so this is from Douglas. Uh, several research have been done in a, a state of art of uh, model for language, including BERT, uh, Indonesian language. Could we loan those? Uh, load? Yes. So we also have a pre-trained model for BERT. Just go to NGC. There is a BERT model available. You can try. Right. Um, <clears throat> this is part of the NLU, right? Uh, it's, it's being done. You can use it. Um, Next question, uh, Ondo, is uh, so he says, how can we, uh, you know, um, so the auto-generated translation being done at the, at the down there is may not be as good as uh, what you can get. So yeah, because the translation by, uh, for example, in this case, I think is YouTube, right? Based on the model they have trained. So the model is not the perfect model. It doesn't actually give a high level of accuracy for the speech it's trying to translate. That's why you need to do localization. That's why we have the Nemo and Riva for you to develop your own model. So before, you know, I can't, I want to, before I close, I want to share a quick, what's happening next? I want to know, I want you to, so be, Nemo and Riva are very good, get started next. What NVIDIA is building next, in the next another six months or so, you will be able to see this. <clears throat> this is a, just a five minutes, uh, Melissa, then I'll, I'll hand over to you. Um, uh, this I just presented in one of the, as a keynote in one of the I, 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 IEEE conference. Um, Let me just bring the slide out. Okay. Um, uh, can can you guys see the screen? Is it coming through, Melissa? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Right. Yes. So, so th there is there's a lot of these models available uh, right, that's being done. Um, I just want to quickly share with you. So we actually <clears throat> we have released Omniverse. Uh, I think, you know, uh, like, for example, uh, there is one universe, two universe, three universe, you put that together, it becomes uh, 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 omni, many, 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 you know, universes that you can create. So we have the omniverse, 
And then we have the AI, which is, for example, for speech recognition, for example, in a conversational AI, where the STT, the NLU, the TDS come together, and then we combine that together with Avatar. You bring all this together. So that is the work that we are doing now. Early access already available. And that's where you can think about how all this three is going to transform. Within the next six months, you will see new things are going to come out, right? Uh, for details, go and watch the GDC 2021 uh, by Jensen Huang. He has given the detail uh, uh, vision. Again, uh, like somebody talked about BERT, right? BERT is one example, but if you see, there is many other models that which already we are working on in NVIDIA, right? Uh, and all this is available in NGC. Uh, so we put that together as part of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the different models. So one of the models that I'm going to cover here a little bit is Megatron. As one example, it's a very large model trained across using multiple of the GXs put together. And again, very simple using uh, the, your own data set to train the model. Um, again, this is a production quality. It can run in a very fast, high-speed manner uh, to get it done, even though... Uh, it's a complex model. It's already deployed by many people in production, used in a different different kind of scenarios. I'm just going to bring a concept how a conversational avatar. Today we talked about conversational AI. That is today's art. What you need to do, right? But next is what is avatar will look like? Putting all this together with a dialogue manager and, and giving a specific purpose, right? I think if those who have seen it. Uh, uh, NGC, sorry, those who have seen a GDC, you'd have I want to show you something. Those who are not looking at this, what Jensen is talking a conversational AI, Toy Me. You're going to see speech understanding, natural language processing on the largest model ever trained, speech synthesis with my own voice, character animation, and beautiful ray trace graphics, all in real time. Toy Me was made with some amazing technologies that have become possible only recently, and barely so. I asked a few friends to ask this cute little guy some tough questions. Let's take a look. Hi. Hello. Hello, Toy Jensen. Hi. Please ask me anything. What are the greatest threats of climate change? The greatest threats of climate change are the effects on human health, food security, water supplies, and the environment. How do astronomers look for exoplanets? Most exoplanets are found via the transit method. That was the case for the TRAPPIST-1 planets. Tell me more about that method. Okay, I, want to go in, I, I don't want to go into detail. I want you to go and take a look at it and see the full uh, demo, right? It's very nice, interesting. So that is how conversational avatar is going to look like. And uh, then other things that we are doing, putting the Riva and the speech and all the components together. It is, uh, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, in another use case scenario, right? Uh, this is where the, you know, this is the Tau, which is using a deep stream component. Uh, and then uh, I, I talked about Riva today. And then there's a Triton, which I have not covered yet. Uh, you know, Omniverse is another <clears throat> platform, again, available using audio to phase. As I'm sharing all this, all these SDKs are free, open for you to go and download, available in NGC, spend time, you know, create more research projects in the university, work on this. This is how... When you put all this together, a simple demo will look like for a kiosk environment. Hi, welcome to Shannon's Cafe. How can I help you? Can I have a cheeseburger with a so side of So this is what you call rings, gaze detection of would vision, right? Would you be interested right? in our popular toppings for cheeseburger like bacon and fried onions? Yeah, let's do it. Done. Add a cheeseburger with bacon and fried onions. What else? What protein options do you have? We have multiple options. I recommend the double protein burger. Would you like that? Do you have any vegetarian options? I can get you a black bean patty instead. Would you like that? Sure. Okay, so I want to go in detail because it takes time for me to run the demo, but it's available in, in, the, in the YouTube. You can go and, and search for this and then uh, you can look at it. So this is an example of more innovation being done using the same Riva 
and uh, you know Nemo and also other SDKs that we are putting together. Um, so the whole convers you know, the whole uh, uh, text is available. I mean, the slides are in in uh, YouTube to listen as a conversation or presentation by Jensen. So with that, I would like to pass back to Melissa and thank you very much for the opportunity given to me to share with the, all the excellent universities uh, uh, as part of the uh, the program. Okay. Melissa? Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Atikan, for your excellent presentation. Uh, jadi, uh, kembali uh, kami mengingatkan uh, di kolom chat box ada link untuk mengisi daftar hadir. Uh, jadi, mohon dibantu untuk uh, diisi, kemudian nanti kami akan mengirimkan sertifikat. Dan kami tunggu kedatangannya untuk uh, di webinar uh, di seri 2 dan seri 3 berikutnya. Kemudian untuk rekan-rekan uh, yang bergabung uh, melalui uh, channel YouTube kami, silakan dapat uh, mengirimkan absensinya uh, dan dikirim dikirim ke alamat ali@absindo.co.id. Ya, baik. Uh, Oke, okay. uh, kalau tidak ada yang lain lagi, sekali lagi kami sudah kita telah uh, ada di penghujung acara. Uh, Thank you so much, Dr. Edekan. Oh, that's all. Izin bertanya. Oh, tadi. there's one question. Yang tadi Ali itu gimana, Bu? Kurang paham, maaf. Oh, baik. Ali at epsindo.co.id. Uh, Alpha, Alpha 5 India at Eko Papa Shera India November Delta Oscar Oscar.co.id. Ini untuk yang bergabung secara itu. Terima kasih, Bu Sinta. Oh, baik. Oke, okay, terima kasih. Yes, thank you. So again, thank you so much, Dr. Atikan, serta uh, peserta yang telah menyimak webinar dari awal sampai dengan akhir. Semoga webinar ini dapat bermanfaat bagi kita semua. Saya mewakili PT Epsindo Prima Solusi menyampaikan mohon maaf apabila ada salah kata dan perbuatan. Akhir kata saya mengucapkan terima kasih dan wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks a lot. Thank you.